It was the worst thing I've ever seen. <coughs> Stupid. So this is a video that I wasn't planning on making and it's a story that I wish never happened. But hopefully there's a lesson in it for all of us. I know I've learned a lesson or two from this. So let's start at the beginning. So you may have seen a Carter Vintage Guitars video of me playing a really cool vintage arch top guitar. Basically a couple weeks ago, uh, me and my friend Alec Noonan, who is an amazing bass player here in town, uh, we got invited to Carter Vintage Guitars to shoot some content for them. Uh, it was going to be a, a duo set up, him on upright bass and me playing uh, various vintage jazz guitars, arch tops. And we shot four videos, there was four guitars. But the one that really stood out to me and the one that was actually the most memorable was the first one that I played, which was a 1946 Gibson L5. Beautiful, big, vintage jazz arch top. It had a DeArmond Rhythm Chief pickup that was perfectly installed so I could plug it into an amp. It definitely was not in a mint condition. It was so somewhat relict. It had a lot of wear visually, uh, but it played great. It sounded amazing. I immediately fell in love with it. You know, I played three other guitars after that and I can't even remember what they were. Like this was the one that I was like totally eyeing. And after the shoot, you know, I couldn't stop thinking about this guitar. It was one of those instruments that I would totally have regretted not buying. If someone else bought it, I would have been really sad. I actually went back to Carter Vintage to play it again, as well as try out some other arch tops I was considering. I think there was uh, like a 1930s L5 uh, without the pickup. But ultimately I, I, I was still in love with this 1946 L5 with the, the pickup. I won't tell you the price, but I can tell you that if I was to buy this guitar, it would have been the most expensive guitar purchase I would have ever had to consider. I kind of made up my mind and I said, I'll figure it out. I'm going to buy this guitar. I need this guitar. It will be mine. Oh yes, it will be mine. So I called my friend at Carter that works there, sales guy. It was a guitar that was on consignment. So we went back and forth and eventually we settled on a price. We agreed on a price. It was a little bit less than uh, what he was asking originally, so that was a plus. So after that, I started making a plan of how I was going to fund this guitar. Uh, I sold a couple guitars on Reverb, so thank you to all you that bought them. Uh, I did some extra video work. I actually put the guitar in layaway just to get it out of the uh, sales floor and off of the website, because uh, I knew it had to be mine. It had to be mine. Oh yes. So finally, I think this was about two weeks ago, I went to the store, I think it was a Monday. I asked my buddy to pull it out of the bag and said, today's the day I'm gonna get it. I think I'm gonna buy it. He pulled it out of the bag. The case that it came with was really old and dilapidated, I must say. We opened it up, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, this was a big purchase for me. So I just wanted to make sure this was the one and make sure everything was Copacetic, of course it was. Yeah, we happy. So after checking out the guitar, went to the cash register, did the transaction, and, and I remember we did have some problems. The card kept on getting declined. So I called, I was on the phone with them. They said it should work fine. Anyways, ended up splitting it up into two different transactions on the same card and it went through. I put the guitar in my car, drove directly home, brought the guitar to my studio, and like naturally I, you know, I opened it up and wanted to play it for a little bit and enjoy my new purchase of this uh, old vintage guitar, the oldest guitar that I've ever owned. Uh, and again, the most expensive guitar that I've ever owned. And like I said before, you know, the case was in, in bad shape and I was planning on transferring it to this really nice, it's a Reunion Blues acoustic uh, gig bag, really nice padded, while I ordered a new hard shell case, whether it was going to be a Calton or a, or just a, a simple SKB. So I played the guitar a little bit. I even took some video. I, I made a little TikTok. How much was it? Uh, uh, how much was it? They gave it to me. So you're not gonna tell me how much was it? They gave it to me. I don't believe you. Why? How are they gonna give you something like that? They gave this, they gave it, they were like, hey, Okay, yeah, they gave it to me. No, they didn't. So I was enjoying my new guitar purchase, uh, but I had to go to the grocery store real quick to, to get some food for the house. And I had made the decision to move the guitar from my control room area of the studio to 
here in my video room, uh, just to get it out of the way because, you know, there's a lot of stuff on the floor. I don't want people, you know, knocking it over or kicking it or whatever. So I, I decided to move it. So I picked up the guitar, walked literally, I don't know, like five, six feet to my video room. The majority of my studio is carpeted. I have rugs everywhere um, and carpet in one room, but I have a little section. I want to say, I'm looking at it right now. It's about you know, three feet by seven feet of exposed tile. So when I walked from the control room over to the video room, as soon as I got over the tile floor, the handle on the case totally disintegrated and broke off and the case just fell down on its side. You know, it wasn't maybe more than two feet up, but it was enough where I could, I felt the vibration through my feet that there was a pretty strong impact. Oh! So naturally I was in shock, swearing a lot, but I immediately opened it up just to check the side of the guitar. That's where it, you know, the side of the case that it fell on. Expecting to see, you know, at least a little dent or, you know, something in the finish. But mind you, this guitar is already relicked as it is. There's tons of scratches and little dents there. And I, I looked at it and I think I might have seen maybe a little chip off of the binding, which is, it's fine. So that didn't bother me. Put the guitar back in the case, getting ready to go to the grocery store. And right before I left, I kind of said, well, l let me check out the rest of the guitar, make sure, you know, it's still in tune, make sure the neck and the headstock are fine because that would have, I don't know what I would have done. So I went back to the guitar, opened it up, took it out, I started playing it, slightly out of tune. I think I, the G string might've gotten knocked out of tune, but I checked the headstock, checked the tuners, checked the neck, everything was fine. I get to the body and what do I see? No. I see two huge cracks on the top of the guitar. Oh God. Both cracks were coming out of that lower F hole. One of the cracks looked just like a crack in the paint. You know, it was in the wood, but it didn't look like it went through the back of the wood. But the second crack, there was splinters coming out of it. I could see the inside of the wood. The binding was totally broken. So there I was. I had just bought the most expensive guitar of my whole life, the oldest guitar in age of my whole life, 1946. And within 20 minutes of me bringing it home, I fucking broke it. The top was broken, the top was split. My feelings at the time, I was pissed, I was in shock, I, I felt helpless. I, I probably cried maybe for like 30 seconds, I don't know. I could, I, I can't even remember. It was kind of a traumatic experience. I'll be honest with you. I was pissed off at myself, I'll tell you that much, because I knew immediately that if I had left the guitar where it was originally in my control room area, this wouldn't have happened. If I had just transferred it to the gig bag like I was going to do later, this would never happen. Things like if I would have held the guitar with two hands or a certain way, it wouldn't have happened. All these, all these, things that I was trying to reason with myself. This type of thing had never happened to me. Yeah, I've dinged up guitars. I've never broken headstocks. I've never broken the top on an acoustic guitar. But eventually I got my head together. I immediately called my buddy at Carter, told him what happened. He said, dude, just bring it in. We'll take care of you. The repair shop would take a look at it and, and take care of it, no problem. The next day, Tuesday, I brought it in and I talked to Wade, who's kind of the head guy at the repair shop, I think. And I'm like, tell me some good news. Tell me it's gonna be okay, just comfort me. And we took a look at it together and he told me what he was going to do, which was basically maybe uh, apply some moisture to it to get the, the wood to, to expand and bring together. And then obviously glue the cracks and then possibly install some more cleats on the back. Maybe I should get the guitar out. So anyways, in less than a week, I think six days, I got it back. It's been repaired. Obviously you can still see the battle scars. You know, it's as structurally sound as it can be right now. Now the only thing that kept my mind at ease and was kind of like a brighter side to this whole story was that it still played great. The guitar still played great. It still sounded great. None of that was affected. In fact, when I got the guitar before I broke it, there were certain notes on here. I think it was like the, this F. Wherever I played that particular F note, whether it was here, here, 
there was a buzzing I was hearing either from the top or from the, you know, the components, the pick guard or whatever. After I broke it and split the top, uh, that buzzing was gone. So maybe that was a sign, maybe that was the saving grace that I actually made the guitar sound a little bit better by breaking it, I don't know. And visually, you know, this guitar has a lot of wear already. And these two lines, you know, I guess it serves as a reminder to me of, of this experience. I'm completely aware that I have devalued this guitar. I straight up lost money on this investment. You know, I tell myself, I don't buy guitars as an investment. I don't buy them to flip them to make money. All of my guitars are player guitars. That's one of the reasons why I like to buy relic guitars and already beat up guitars so I don't feel horrible if I get them dinged up or crack open the tops. Yes, it would be nice to have the option to maybe sell this in the future to upgrade to another arch top or another vintage guitar. And that's still feasible. So what's the lesson here? Maybe don't get too attached to these types of things because shit like this can happen. They can break, they can get damaged, they can get stolen. I'm curious to know what your reaction would have been. Let me know down in the comments. You know, for me, it was the excitement of getting a brand new guitar immediately followed by the immense stress and sadness of damaging it immediately. And then on top of that, not being able to enjoy it because I had to bring it in to get repaired. So if anything, that was the sad, that was really the saddest part of this whole story was not being able to play this beautiful instrument for that time period. But now it's back. It freaking sounds great still. So has this ever happened to you guys? Let me know, make me feel better. I don't wanna be the only person that this has happened to. Uh, if you like this video or feel a little bit of sympathy for me, please click that thumbs up. If you are into videos that are much more happier and more positive than this video, like gear demos and guitar lessons, click that subscribe button. Thanks again for watching, I'm Argeron Kilio, and I'll see you in the next one.